Hi, Dougie Burp and Douglas Sackwell here. Stuart. Stuart, how are you, mate? Hey, Dougie, how are you going, mate? Mate, I've been good. You've been fishing this week. I haven't. Yeah. Not yet. That's all right, mate. That's it. Yeah, so we uh, have got uh, some reports for you guys for the uh, next three days, the 19, 20, 21st of July, 2024. Okay, so last weekend, Monster Swell, very, very sorry to hear what happened down the Tweed Bar. It was a very bad accident. Um, we have to really respect, I, I've mentioned yeah. it so many times, to respect the, the, um, the seaway and the bars or any coastal bars when there is a big swell running. And you must, it's very important that you must, check the Swell Wave Rider Boy on the Wave Rider Boys, local to your area, before you leave home in the morning, okay? It might be only a metre when you go to bed, but overnight it might spike up to three metres. And, and if you get in the dark and you don't know... Just the ocean happen. in general, you just mm. got to have respect for that. And it changes yeah. so quickly as well. I mean, we've all been caught out once or twice, but it definitely does. As Dougie said, it can spike like that really, really quick. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that's very unfortunate. But uh, please, please always remember that. Check the wave boy before you go out in the morning. It takes five minutes to check it out. Check it out on your phone if you have to on your computer or whatever. Yep. Just do it. Check the wind as well. Okay, um, let's go on the report. So Saturday, obviously, um, I don't think anyone got out Saturday. It was um, no. big swell. Yeah. Day in the sea. Uh, Sunday, a few boats did get out. The swell did drop a little bit. Um, looked out, it was the last day you could catch snapper before the closure, Stuart. Yep. And there was a lot of snapper caught. There was. And the bigger ones have definitely come in, so they've timed it perfectly this year for the closure. Um, I hope they'll spawn and we'll have a really big snapper season next year or the year mm -hmm. after. But um, guys, look, it was um, the, the snapper that were caught on Sunday were commonly around that 50 to 70, 80 centimetre size. Yep. And everyone bagged out that I know of pretty well. So a lot of good snapper. I did maybe a fishing on the 18, 24 fathom reef, 36s, 50s, are just everywhere. Um, there was also a few Kobe caught, a few Mulloway caught in close. Some big kingies on the 36 fathom reef and on the 50 fathom reef. Some really big ones, actually. I was speaking to one of our customers yesterday. Lost one next to the boat, actually. Um, it, um, yeah, just definitely you know, lost it. <laughs> it was around, he estimates around about 30 kilos and about 1.3, 1.4 metres. It's a big one. Um, that one. But anyhow, so a lot of kings around. This is the time of year we get them, August, September, October, okay? So yep. jigging's really good. So, Stewie, jigging. Jigging, mate. Yeah. Long, skinny jig, easier to work in that deeper water. So yep. even though it's 300 grams or 250 grams, yeah. um, they're still not too bad to work, Dougie. Yeah, so, so we, less we resistance. Jigging them quite fast, Stuart. Yeah. As you said, the more skinny styles are easier to work. Yep. You can use the slow, slow pitch style, like this type of jig here, um, in that sort of, they're in the room at two, three hundred, as Stewie said. Um, these are at about sort of 130 to 200, depending on what sort of braid you're using, I guess. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's all sort of relevant to the size of Brave using and the leader. Um, but definitely kings on the 50 fathom reef northeast. So obviously we can't catch snapper and pearl perch until the 16th of August, the next time we go out again yep. and chase them. So in the interim, if the weather is nice, which it probably will be when there's a closure, <laughs> I would definitely recommend um, chasing kingies. Um, or chasing demersals in close to like this sort of stuff, maybe. Yeah, so yeah. ball jigs, Dougie. I mean, we always sell them for uh, for snappers and stuff like that, mm. but they catch so many tuskies and um, like husses and yeah. cod and yeah. all that type of stuff. Yeah, it's um, they're amazing. They're yeah. a great little lure. Yeah, so just yeah. out of the rod holder or just slow, mm. slow, slow work it. Very, very slow work it. If anything, just lift it up and drop it back down. You can tea bag it, um, but you can use those anywhere from. 30 metres deep to 130 metres deep, Stuart. Yeah. yeah, very good. Um, so that's in close, you're chasing parrotfish, yep. cod, yep. Um, trade too, and unfortunately we'll catch snapper as a bycatch, yeah. please throw them back. Um, and uh, yeah, it's good fun, good fun for kids too. Out wider, um, but definitely going to chase um, whatever we can get on there. <laughs> Trag, um, rosy jobfish, unfortunately getting to catch snapper and pearl is a bycatch, but that's the way it is. Release or no release, pretty good Just to take care of them. Yeah, yep. and uh, give that a crack. And Stewie, um, what else in close? Obviously, cobia. So you go out live baiting, you get a chance to get the snapper a little bit less if you live bait. Yeah, oh, that's a big one. <laughs> but I'd definitely be chasing uh, jewies and cobia at this time of the year in close on live. Definitely, yeah. yeah, definitely. Give that a crack. Um, other than that, guys, out wider. Look, it's the start of the deep drop of the deep dropping season. So um, we're about to head out probably the next couple of weeks chasing them, Stewie. So. Yep. Uh, chasing flamies, bar cod, bass groper, doing jigging in deep water, doing all that sort of stuff, which you'll start to see from our reports coming through. Um, 
And our ne- actually, our next seminar next week, sorry, on the 23rd, I think uh, it is, on our next Thursday next week, <laughs> um, is about deep dropping. So if you want to learn a little about losing electrics in deep dropping, we're not going to do jig in that night, we're going to do another night. So it's also going to be just electric reel fishing. Or if you want to do it by hand, we'll teach you that too. Um, the steering wheel, I'll just, I'll tell you how to push the buttons on the electrics. <laughs> um, but we'll be doing a deep, deep drop seminar next Thursday night. Okay. Um, guys, the other thing too is spanner crabs, a few spanner crabs around. So one of our customers went out again on Sunday, I think it was, and they got some really good crabs and, and heaps of them as well. And he's a newbie at it, so well done. Um, okay, let's sort of head up to, well, actually, Stuart, one last thing. Hmm. Wesley wind blowing over the weekend, very good fishing in close. Out wider, ugly, out wide. yeah, ugly out wide. So yep. it's probably going to be a big close fishing this weekend. Um, try and keep within 50 meters, I dare say. Yeah, and just watch that wind. I don't think the swell is going to spike at the moment, but if there's a low down south when that does get here. Please be aware of it. Yeah, yep. watch it, watch your wave, boys. Again, okay, we're going to go out to jumping pin. Now, Stu, you went fishing the last couple of days, mate. Lady fishing, yeah, I did, mate. How'd you go? Not real great. It was very windy. It was very windy. Yeah, that's so right. So look, a lot of the banks with this westerly wind you get blown onto, creates dirty water, and I've got so many excuses to describe my poor outcome. Mm. But I caught fish, but not many of them. So Dougie's not the only one. <laughs> that does bad sometimes. <laughs> so no, it's just like yeah, it's been it's just it's, it's been a poor average. bite on windy. That it's like between zero and thirteen percent all week. It's been quite low. If you guys did well. On the fish in it this week, um, you've done really, you've mm. done you've beat that better yeah. than average. Um, look, and it's also been a very low pressure system, so it's been around that sort of thousand nine, thousand and thirteen max. Yeah. So um, that's something that puts the fish off. So it is meant to come up a little bit this weekend um, as the moon's getting better too. The phase of the moon's better. You've got high tide bite early morning, eight o'clock sort of mid morning bite till ten o'clock um, with that uh, two hours after high tide bite. And then you got the sim in the afternoon on the, on the um, after low tide coming back up again, and then you got a dark bite. So it's a really good tide for catching tailor actually. Yeah. On the beaches and on the uh, morning and afternoon, and uh, and also uh, in the broad water. But jumping pin, there was heaps of tailor there against you. Yeah, heaps of tailor around. Yep. So heaps of bait. Um, there was schools of broom chasing yep. the bait and stuff like that. There's still flatties around as we said, but um, mm. yeah, it was just less activity. Fish are still there, but they just don't want to bite as much. No. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Well, I'm sure he's on. Uh, anyhow, <laughs> you didn't fish this week, so you can't even have a smart comment. So whatever. I'll, I'll give you a report tomorrow when I get back in there. Yeah, tomorrow's yeah. the best weather all week. So it's like five not westerlies. It's absolutely beautiful, and the tide's perfect. So Doug is going to go out there and catch probably five undersized ones and think that he's king again. And uh, yeah, that's all right. Okay, let's go on the report. Yeah. Okay, folks. <laughs> okay, um, my face is going red. Street. Um, what else is up the pin, mate? So you got Taylor, um, yeah, flatties. Taylor, flatties. Um, well, still a few what? crabs up there too, Dougie. So heaps of crabs out, yeah. yeah right. And sandies and muddies. So, yeah, okay. Um, the water turns very cold. So it's like 14 to 16 degrees. But yeah, right. It's, um, it's very cold. Yeah, there's still a bit of crab yep. activity around. And did you see any wide you went up on the flat shallow place? Yeah, a few, like not many. Just yeah, a few. Okay. Yeah, up around the lagoons, yep. there'll be a few wide. Okay, so the whiting probably up the river a bit more because it's a bit warmer during, as the shallow water gets a bit mm. warmer during the day. Um, yeah, so. Come back down the broadwater way, all the shots. How's that been fishing, Stuart? Yeah, not too bad. That's been probably better than up the pin. So yeah. still a little bit of discoloured water with that uh, westerly wind. A lot yep. of mud bank around there. So westerly yep. wind creates like breakers in the in the um, broadwater yep. and it's all muddy banks. So around there, the water's been a little bit dirty, but a lot of bait around there, Dougie. So yeah, yeah you fish I was going to say, so. probably this weekend, if that westerly wind was going to be howling on Saturday, which it is 20 knots at 5 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Um, I look, I'd be probably going um, in the... Pimpamar, the Coomba River Arms, or definitely Coomba Lakes up to the boundary and trolling, casting. Yeah. Out of that wind, same place you'd be out of the wind. Mm. Otherwise, out in the broadwoods, especially on the east side of called Stratty, yep. it's going to be blowing. That's That'd be very average. Blowing hard. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, going to get flatties, probably trolls through. You got some new trollers there from yeah, Shimano. Yeah. So, a little Shimano ones, mate. These are brand new, is mate. Yeah. Japanese ones that we wouldn't normally see, but we are seeing them. So, mm. yeah. They look hot. I know I've got those in my little kid we go yeah. to go yep. trolling this weekend. Yep, they look really good, mate. Yep. Yep. And um, Stu, casting, what's your preference, mate? Look, so casting, again, Shimano stuff. Uh, we're very fortunate to have got these ones in, but um, Silent Assassins, not too bad. Something good colours. Again, very good colours, so yeah. this is just a bit of a 
this a sample of what's on the wall? This is Bacasti on the flats up to about maybe five foot deep. Yep. 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 So those fellas there, a couple of others, a couple of really like, tried and proven, but that bottom one looks uh, pretty the good. The bottom one looks really good actually. Yep. In profile. Yep. Yeah, because give that a crack, Stu. Um, so mate, other than that, um, you've got some casting ones there for Taylor, mate. So yeah, if you're so going to fish the beach, maybe I was going on to Australia, fish the beach. or keep on the Australia area at the moment. Yeah. So walk over, or yep. um, you can do it in the boat if the swell's small enough. Or up, or up the top of the pin there, and yep. just park your boat in the basin, just walk on the, on the tip there. Yeah, so they're just like yep. a sinking stick bait. So it's yep. still a fair bit of weight, mm. 130 mil, mm. and um, just long cast stuff. So. Yeah, that'll work well. Yep. Yeah, they really well. like. Yep, plenty of weight to cast. Yeah. Um, so we'll come back down to Broadwater. So I saw there's a lot of squid. Still getting squid everywhere. I can't believe I don't know how many squid have been pulled out of water this year, but, few. but they replenish yeah. themselves pretty quick. Um, look, there's been a lot of squid around um, anywhere from as from the marina all the way through up to uh, the Gold Coast Bridge now. So yeah. in the main channels, the east and west side, gives it a crack. Um, Whitey up the Narang River. I see Wayne Young got a hip again. Uh, he's fishing up around the council terms, I think, a little bit further up around Carrara. Yeah. Um, so that's worth a go, preferably late afternoon and at night. Um, and look, other than that, I would dare say probably if you're going to chase broom, just around Wave Break Island mm. walls, the north wall of the seaway. The tides are really good this weekend, as we said. It's high tide like Saturday at 6.30 or something like that, 7 o'clock in the morning. So if you fish very, very light, fish um, pilchards or tailor flesh or, or bonito uh, tuna flesh, and they're like about a pea sized sinker, and you'll catch heaps of broom. And you might get snapper, but you've got to throw them back because it's out of season time. Yep. But um, you'll get some good fish, so give that a crack maybe as well. Um, if ladies around Crab Islands, do worth yep. a go. Yeah, Especially. definitely worth a go. That last yep. of run out, first of run in around yep. midday. Yep. The water's had a chance to warm up over the flats, and they mm. should feed pretty hard. So. Yep. 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 That sounds good. And beach fishing. So on the surf side of um, the sort of surface paradise and Southport area, I'd be definitely going out for beach fish for Taylor late afternoon, early morning. Naranek's always worth a crack, um, as is Phillip Park. Opposite sea well there, yep. and uh, and down further down, Chugan's been really good. Uh, Fingerhead's been really good. Again, watch the rocks, uh, the, the waves, sorry, and um, and probably around Burley as well. So there's not mm. much swell around. If, if we're lucky to get that westerly wind, drop the swell right out. It's like a tail of fest. Yeah, yeah. So it's really good. Yeah. So give that a go. And Stewie, you got some little flathead lures there, mate. Well, that's that sort of size. That's a Stewie size flathead. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. MMD. Um, that's a flatfish. They've been not too bad as well lately. Um, definitely targeting that bigger fish, but mm. flathead eat flathead. But Dougie, yeah. it looks like you've been down to the trawlers and collected your bag of prawns for the week or something like that. <laughs> yeah, there's, that's right. There's like 20 packages of prawns on the uh, counter. Well, we just got but, about, I think it's around about, we got over a thousand packets of gulp just turned up. This week we've had, we've had seriously this week around about four to 500 new items in the store, yeah. which is amazing. Uh, but look, um, turbo shrimps, these guys are hard to beat for flatties. Um, they're one of my go-tos as well. Um, I definitely like these fellows here. Um, and look, years ago, and they're still around and they still work as good as ever, um, just a three-inch plain old gulp shrimp, sorry, like that type of thing, <laughs> are really, really good. Um, and so they're my, like, my two go-tos. And as always, that's my real go-to. <laughs> that's rigged up my rod all the time. Um, S-Fact, actually, I've got one of my rod over there, I think. Yep. But anyhow, they're really, really good. So um, that's the go for the flatties this weekend. My, my, my choice of weapons too. Yours the choice of weapons are the shallow ones there. Yep. And the trolling ones. So we've got them all here, guys. Um, don't forget on our beach gear, we've got until um, next seminar, which is till next Thursday. We're running 30% of our beach gear at the moment. Yep. And we've got some specials on rods and reels as well. And we've got a beach seminar on tonight. There's a night. You'll see that online probably around Sunday, I think. Yep. Yeah, so um, don't forget to... Jump on. Oh, shoot. Come get there. Fresh water. Sorry, last thing. Fresh water. Real quick. Yeah. One. What's Again. Happening? What's happening there, mate? So trolling those deep divers, Dougie. Yep. Cover a bit of ground. Troll the weed, uh, the tree lines. Yep. Troll the main basin in the dams and just with a big deep diver. So these yep. ones are brand new. We unpacked yep. them last Saturday. Young Marcus that works here actually fished them on the Sunday at Wivenhoe and smashed them. They're really, really, really good. Yeah, yeah. good. Yeah, they've got the perfect beautiful, perfect shape. So, yep. And they've got that flash boost, which looks really good in the water. Yep. Yeah. Oh well, um, anyhow, stay tuned. <laughs> Don't forget to follow us on our YouTube and uh, Instagram pages and tell your friends about it. And uh, look forward to hearing how you went over the weekend fishing. Just be careful of the swell and wind. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, man. Bye. Bye.